Welcome to the next video on SQL Lite. In this video, I'll show you how to use SQL joins to avoid coding complex list traversals for normalized data. In many kinds of database design classes, you'll learn to keep data about different kinds of entities, or of each different kind of entity in its own table, and to keep data about relationships between entities in another table. If you search the internet for terms such as database, normalize, or insert anomaly or delete anomaly you'll see why using nor normalized data is good for example suppose you have a phone book application you need the ability to add users add phones and assign users to phones it's a typical application for perhaps a small company a good normalized design would have a table of users with the attributes of the users in one table and a table of phones with the attributes of phones in another table and um, and a table of that 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 assigns phone a phone to a user let's start off with the, what the table would look like so I've already populated a, a database I go dump there we go. So I have uh, three tables, a, a user table with a name and ID. I have a phone table with uh, an ID and a phone number and a phone user table with, uh, with the user ID which maps it to the user and a phone ID which maps it to a phone. Now let's suppose you want to find the phone number of J. So you go into the user table right here and you look up J and you see the user ID is 1. And then you go to the phone user table down here and you see that user ID 1 which is right here uh, maps to phone ID of 2. Then you go to the phone table and whoops, and you see phone ID 2 maps to 221 and now you have Jay's phone number. When I first started looking at normalizing data, which was quite a bit before I learned SQL, I was struck by how much code I would have to write to traverse these wonderfully normalized tables. Imagine storing these tables in three hash tables or three linked lists and then using nested while loops to get the data. It's no wonder that programmers who don't realize the power of SQL prefer denormalized tables that is putting everything into one table because these such tables are easier to traverse especially if you, all you have is linked lists or binary trees or hash tables as your main data structures. However, denormalized tables have too many edge cases that require a lot of coding. They suffer brittleness, etc. I've seen many embedded software developers fall into this trap precisely because traversing normalized tables is initially a pain in the butt. So, when I realized the power of using SQL joins, I understood why I wouldn't have to write so much code. Let's start with a join. A straight join, or a cross join as it's called, joins each row of one table with each row of another table in the join and delivers the result. Right? So, for example, let's suppose I do user.id, user.name, phone, user.userid, and phone, user.phone id from user cross join phone user. Okay, so what I'm doing is joining the user table with the phone user. So I would expect uh, that since the user table has three values and the phone user table has three values, the join would combine each row of the one table with the other. So I'd expect nine rows in my answer. Let's see what I get. I get nine rows with each row of one table joined with each row of the other table. Of course, this is not a useful result yet because you actually need to run an inner join. An inner join is just a cross join with an on clause. So I'll do the same same query except now I'll say on um, 
on uh, user dot ID equals phone user dot user ID. Now I see there are three results where the user IDs in both tables match, and that's the result of a cross join, uh, an inner join. So you can see that three phones have been assigned to two different users. To figure out the phone owned by J, all you would do is just add another clause, something like uh, where user.name equals J. And then you'll see J is assigned to uh, phone number two. Um, and then, of course, you could just then do select phone number from phone where ID equals two. And you have the phone number. However, you could do all of this with just one SQL query. So what we'll do is we'll start with a cross join. Hang on a second. We'll start with a cross join of uh, all three tables. Okay, so we'll select user ID, username, phone user, and then the phone number, everything from the three tables. And we'll cross join the user table with the phone user table and the phone table. Now, because it's doing three joins, uh, and because the tables have three, four, and three res rows respectively, you would expect three times four times three, which is 36 rows in the answer. Let's see what we get. Boom! We have 36 rows. This isn't useful yet. So then, let's do another join, except now what we'll do is we'll put an on clause so that the uh, user ID matches the phone user user ID. Okay, so we'll do uh, copy and I'll just paste in the query. And Okay, so now I'm interjoining the phone user and interjoining with the phone and I'm just making sure that the user IDs match. And now I get a smaller set of results but it's still not useful because I still don't know which phone is assigned to J or K or whatever. So then I'm going to do another query and I'm going to add something to the on clause which basically says that um, the user IDs have to match, and so do the phone IDs. Paste that in. See, now, if you look at the on clause here, it says on user ID equals phone user dot user ID, and phone ID equals phone user dot phone ID. So you want to make sure the user IDs match and the phone IDs match when you join the three tables. And now you see J is assigned this phone number, as we found out before, and K is assigned these phone numbers. Um, now, and then of course we can run the same query, whoops, we can run the same query uh, again and say, and phone.id equals phone, whoops, not sorry, and user.name equals j. And then we get j's phone number and you can also do the same thing for k. You see K has these phone numbers. All right. Now, once you have this in SQLite, you can do other interesting queries. I'll just give you a quick example, but you can use all the averaging functions. So for example, you could do the same thing. And if you want to know how many phones does K own, what you want to do is take the results of this query, and you just want to go select count star from. So you want to select count star from that query that you had before for K and you see that K has two phone numbers. Again, if you're managing an enterprise phone system, that's probably a useful thing to be able to do. Now, there's another kind of join called the left outer join. And you can also run that in SQLite. And in this kind of a join, uh, it produces the results of the inner join, as we talked about before, and then it adds results from the left table that has no inner join matches with the right table. So, for example, if I say, um, if 
If I say select star from user and then left outer join with the phone user on user ID, user dot ID equals phone user dot user ID, I'll get all the results of the inner join plus all the results from the user table that don't match, that don't have a corresponding entry in the phone user table. And as you can see, we have the results of the inner join and then May, which is so May really is an unassigned phone number. Uh, in fact, if you run the same query, oops, hang on, I'll show you. Uh, copy. If you run this almost the same query, let's see if I can get this right. So you select star from user, left outer join phone user on user ID equals phone user, and then you run the accept clause. So you take all the results from the outer join and then remove select star from user inner join phone user on user IDs matching. Then you should expect that you'll have one results, the first three results eliminated because of the accept clause. So it should just leave you with May. And there you go. So you can use this. Okay. Um, you can also run other queries. For example, now you can say um, you can uh, you can say select star from phone left out or join phone user when where the phone IDs match. And then you can see that 3101111 is an unassigned phone number. Now let's suppose you add two more phones into the phone table. Okay, so I'm just going to run a couple of quick queries. Okay, and I'll run another quick query. Uh, no, it's not a query, it's an insert actually. And all right, and now, so if you go select star from phone, see you have all these extra phones. If you run one of the previous queries, you'll see now that there are in fact three unassigned phone numbers. Now, let's say you add a new person into your phone. These are just typical operations you do when running your application anyways. So you add a new guy named Ray and you want to you want to give him an unassigned phone. So again from this query up here actually you can run this query here to find your unassigned phones which is almost the same as the query as you did here. And so what you do is paste. So you select select the phones that match with the phone ID and the phone user table and eliminate the results from the inner join using the accept clause and you see that these three phone numbers are un unassigned. From there you could just assign a phone to Ray by going so you know that Ray is is ID 4 as you discovered up here somewhere uh, Hang on a second, where did I put Ray in the phone? I know I put him in somewhere. Did I put in Ray? Ah, uh, yes I did. Okay, so you can assign Ray. So that's value, that's uh, ID 4, and let's say 6 is an unassigned phone number. So I'll just give him 6, if that's his new phone. Now, if I if I run the same query, I can see that phone number six is unassigned. When you understand the power of joining tables using SQL, whether it's a cross join, an inner join, or an outer join, you'll see that you can gain the benefits of normalizing your data without incurring the cost of writing code to traverse multiple hash tables or linked lists to get the data you need. In fact, a lot of those traversals can be reduced to a two or three line query, as you can see, and you can just drive those queries using your SQLite API or an API from any other database. This means that you can design your data to a very high normal form without, writing the without having to write query traversal code, and that in turn will give you more flexibility, much better data integrity, and less code to do the same amount of work. I hope you found this video useful.